So team, uh, welcome back to the continuation day two for our Selenium training. So we will start with a quick recap of what we did in day one and then continue with day two. All right. So I'm going to start with going to the core folder, C colon slash Selenium and then our J11 folder. Right. So here is the Excel that we created where we very quickly said what is the application, what we're going to do, how we're going to automate it and so on. Right. And we've learned that basic functionality of this application as to what is it that we wish to test. First, we tried to do it manually. Then I told you, why is it efficient, reusable, and accurate? Uh, why do you lose that when you continue to do it manually over and over again? And now we are trying to get into how do we do it through automation using a tool called Selenium? How do we achieve efficiency, reusability, and accuracy? Have we seen that output? No, but we are in the path of identifying why and how. Right, team? So, most importantly, what we did is we started with an IDE. Is IDE something that we will always start with even if we work with a live application in a project? No, not necessarily. IDE is something as a starting point for our learning, not necessarily as a starting point when you work with your project. At that time, we would have skipped the IDE portion and started doing everything at a code level itself. We're going to get there eventually. Now, let me launch up the Selenium IDE and show you what we did in that. So primarily, we did a record and while that record was going on, we performed the user activities manually. Selenium learned all the steps that we executed and stored them in this specific UI, the user interface, right? So where is that? If I go to file and say open and select this CS1, CSL1 file that we saved yesterday, we will come up with all the steps it got generated. Some of the steps got generated, some of the steps we wrote them ourselves. Why? When we did a record, we didn't record every step that we wanted. We then identified what are the steps that were missing and we went into the ID, right click and said, started with insert a new command. And we started to write those commands. So what are these commands? There are three things that we have learned. The first thing is what file. What is it that the user is doing? Is he clicking or is she clicking on a button or a link or typing something into an edit field? Are we opening a URL and so on? The target part is something Selenium has automatically learned as a way to recognize that where part as to Fair enough, we will type. Fair enough, we can click, we can navigate and so on. But where do we do that? So the identification of each of the components that's viewing the page called as elements are given in the target column. And the value basically has been additional information that we need to store based on the type of activity. For example, type is the command, the what command. Where it says uh, how to identify it. Now the value is basically what else, what do you want to type? We know where, we know that we want to type, but what is it that we want to type? Those things are getting loaded in the value. Have we mastered all the commands? No. Have we gone into element identification extremely well? No, not yet. So today, the main focus team is going to be around the element identification. That is, how is Selenium identifying elements and putting that specific information in the value? What is it that it is showing out here? Okay. There are different levels to element identification team. Some things which are available, some things which we use more often than not. Okay. The first level is something called as a ID or name. Okay. What do I mean by ID or name? If I go to any of these fields, how do I see the HTML code for that specific field? I right click on the field and I say inspect element. How do you see inspect element? If you install Firefox, like I showed in day one, you will be able to see that, correct? So I'm going to click on inspect element. What do I see out here? What I see is the HTML code corresponding to this specific element or object in the activity report. This is the HTML code that defines this. Whatever is given here based on this input, this field is displayed. Is this field or element same as this element? No. If I right click here and say inspect element, it will highlight a different section. 
So everything that you see in a web-based application has some component in the HTML code on the background that is helping to display that. Why is this text in green color? Is this a text or an image? Where is this background coming from? What are the values being entered here? All of these things. Is this style sheet important to us? No. Right now, we don't even need that. All I need is this. So my object or element of interest is this. Okay, so I'm going to click here and it will highlight that specific element there. Now, the first thing Selenium looks at is is there an attribute with a name called as ID or not? What do I mean? I mean that Selenium can look at certain information within this highlighted text here to be able to recognize that element. What are they? Type equals text. So if I just say type equals text, then it will try and find an element that is identified by that. That is a identification type, one of the properties. Size equals text, value equals so on, name equals feature. The type equals text may not be just common to this element. It can also be the same thing that you may see in the next element out here. Right? So this can repeat. So can the size, so can the value. So something unique has to be identified. For example, to identify you and me, a phone number, an email address, a social security number, a DNA match, something is unique to you. Just your first name like Jeff? No, there are, there are millions of same names. So we need additional information to identify that. The first thing that Selenium looks at is, is there an ID or name that is unique to that element? Okay, how do I know? So this is team all about trying to identify element. And very important that you may have to go back and revisit, repeat this video and try and practice at the same time. That's going to help. Because first time when you look at anything, it may look very new, a lot of things getting introduced. But once you repeat it and practice a little, you'll master it. All right. So how do I know that name equals scopes identifies this one? To do that, all I can do is even here, it doesn't matter which one. I don't need to do test case altogether. I can go here and start to write something out here. So if I say name, like you see in the format above, equals uh, books and say find. Will it highlight that element? There you go. You see a very quick yellow highlight coming for that and disappearing for that element. Yeah, that is the one. So I know for sure it is highlighted. But how about I take type equals text. If I say type equal text and say find, it doesn't find it. In fact, it is probably sometimes not even unique, uh, uh, correct syntax to do that. All right. So how we're going to do this team is the first level of identification is if there is a attribute each of these things that you see for every element like type or a size or a value or here this new thing developed called style and name are all attributes if there are values for these attributes that are unique then selenium can easily identify it for example, if I talk about calculator, if I right click and say inspect element, do you see anything that can uniquely identify it? Input class equals calc button one, type equals button one, on click subject, value equals calculator, right? So there are different things that are being represented here. Do you see a ID or name? No. If Selenium first step is if it finds unique ID or name attribute for that element, use that. That's the first option. If that is not present, then it will go about creating its own XPath or CSS. Okay? So, is it important for us to master XPath in totality or CSS, that cascading style sheets that come with HTML? No, not needed for our case. But as you slowly develop in your career in Selenium, you will get a lot of knowledge on that. But to begin with, you've got to identify that XPath is basically an identification to 
relate to what is the path for that element. So what you see here, when we, so if I go here and I right click and I say copy X path, what it does is for this specific calculate button, I have copied the X path into my clipboard. So now if I go ahead and paste it, it will show me this X path. What is this X path? This is the second level of identification. How? It will say that here is the path to that specific element in the HTML code. How can I relate to this? And since I'm basically giving the information as is done by Selenium IDE, but we will use a different way altogether, which I'll come to right after this. Okay. Now, the way it works team is if you look at the HTML code, the first, these are all called HTML tags. Okay. And team, a good website to refer for a overall HTML knowledge is w3schools.com. Okay. They've got simple tutorials, pretty neat and simple to what extent you need. You can go to w3schools.com and learn HTML. HTML is a skill required by anyone in the IT industry. It's a good thing to have. You don't need to be an expert, but you need to know very simply how it works because there's too much web out there. Uh, almost every application has a web uh, components to it. So you got to understand how it is done exactly. These are all different HTML tags. These are basically represent a certain thing in the code. So HTML means that here is the starting of the overall HTML code. Like this beginning tag at the end of the HTML file, you'll also see an ending tag. The ending tag typically starts with a forward slash and that's the slash saying for that HTML that we started here, this is the end. Everything contained between the beginning and ending is the uh, complete information in that tag. All right. Head is similarly something else. But under HTML, there is a head, then there is another body. Do you see this? Only two things. HTML head and body. If I expand the head, you'll see many more things later. If you expand the body, you'll see other things later. This path is telling us the exact path. So it's saying start with the HTML, okay? Then go to the body, then go to the form, then go to the first div element, okay? Then go to the third div element. So this is first, second, third. Then go to another div element, another div element, another div element, then the fourth div element, then the table. There is another table body in there. There is a row. Go to the 16th row. Go to the second column. And the element that has the input as the HTML tag is the one we need. Got it? That is how Selenium automatically can identify based on this X path. Okay? This X path team, if I say fine, now it can identify it. But the issue is tomorrow if the application changes, and some code is getting generated in there. What happens? Then instead of this being the fourth div, it may be the fifth div or something deleted. Then this will become third div. So this is relative to lot of other elements that are associated with it. It is the related path to that element based on where other elements are. Anything changes, then the address changes. So basically I'm saying that, uh, you know, Karen is my neighbor, right? Will Karen always be my neighbor? No, not necessarily. What if I move? Someone else living with me um, and will that person also be my neighbor? Not necessarily, right? Karen? So that is the issue. However, if you give a social security number or a passport number, whatever, that becomes more unique to identify. Team, do I make sense of what I've shown so far? Are there any questions in how Selenium does it, which is important to know, but the real thing is going to come now. Any questions, please? I'm going to pause for a few minutes, take a few questions, and then move forward with it. I'm just getting a few questions. I'm going to look at it and uh, address them first, please. Okay. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. What 
team talking my team i was getting an error while running the entire test uh, i don't think maithili if we are doing anything on the current uh, i was getting an error while running the entire test game error element id ct100 underscore com content placeholder underscore getting started rb member blah blah blah, blah. i was not set seeing this error when i was clicking on step allow uh, mark button i am confused i don't get it so okay what happened is like i was mentioning that issue okay sometimes things will change so for example when i say find you see this calculate and if i go to the inspect element for this you see this background color is right now this now someone can go in and change something out here then what would happen is the information needs to identify it much so we have to design a way through which we can uniquely identify and that's what i'm going to show you how we create our own custom x path for every element okay um, that's one we're gonna once i show you this hopefully you can go and try the same thing mightily that should probably take care and how the dynamic object can be identified yes the same way lots of ways of dynamic object identifying i'm not trying to conduct one session on dynamic object however uh, this is the step one towards element identification then element identification using xpath custom uh, xpaths then we will talk about dynamic objects then we can talk about ajax based objects and so on okay html5 yes it does uh, we use xpath but we'll always have the issue uh, so ask the questions uh, what is this uh, we use xpath but we'll always have this issue also uh, we yeah so let's see once we go into this analysis of how we do it then we'll see why do we need xpath why do we need xpath if it's not able to identify the element accurately properly where it is use that yes uh, if the calculate button has to change to radio button then what to do correct why do we need xpath if it's not able to parmela one question one time good enough i'll go to the exercise okay all right so then what is the point that is the reason that you don't just depend on what selenium ide generates on its own okay how do we show this we teach selenium to recognize these elements is what i'm talking about okay firefox you will see probably the uh, firebug under tools if you have installed firebug i believe it's under tools for earlier version i don't remember it but if you refer to any of my earlier videos on selenium um, it should be there if it's not there probably that means that you have not installed it yet even you should try it again go to getfirebug.com and try and install it all right all right see let me get back to the most important topic of the day element identification on its own have we uh, is this the beginning and ending of element identification no introduction to get us going forward so what is then the third level the third level is our xpath we will create our own custom xpath based on certain element attributes and their values what do i mean i mean to say that there is a format to write an xpath have you seen this whole format how does it start two forward slashes and then the tag of the element related to the other elements correct now the other way is two forward slash html tag open bracket add attribute name equals single quotes attribute okay underscore value this is the simplest formula how is this the simplest formula oops i'm so sorry one second team can you see my screen now sorry about that okay i think uh, the screen should be visible now so basically what i was showing is if this is the two forward slashes now xpath custom based on certain element attributes and their values and here is the format in which we will write what do i mean by this html tag let's take a quick example okay the same calculate button the html tag is the first word you see after that less than sign that is the first word here what do i see here now in this case i have to say input that is the html tag with this what i'm telling is selenium search for 
all the elements that are found in this application that start with or have a HTML tag input, but there might be so many of them. Then what do we do? The next thing is open square bracket, use an at symbol, write one of the properties that is unique to it. So let's say type equals button. Type equals is the attribute name. Type is the attribute name. What is the name that you see one of the properties? Like I'm saying the last name is so on or the street address is so on for an individual. Okay. Now single quotes I'm going to say button whatever value I see in here. Now close the square bracket. This is a format out of it. However, it is how, how do I increase the notepad font? Okay, I can't increase the notepad font, but what I can do is I can take a word document and put it in there and close here. This is good. I use this notepad because it's much easier that the way. Okay, great. So, will this work or not? No. Your first and most important thing team of element identification is the syntax part. Is that correct or not? After that, we have to go on a trial and error uh, method. What do I mean? Take this, put it into the IDE. So this we already did. Let's go to a new step and paste it here in the target field. Get your application so that you can see when it gets highlighted and click on the find button. Does it do it? Great. It works. So my trial and error worked. This is good. Now I can sit with it. If tomorrow someone comes and changes the web page, as long as the type remains to be button for this, very good. But how about start over? Right click, inspect element again. Now what do you see? Input class whatever type equals button. Let's write a X path for this. Okay. How I'm going to write the X path? Let's see. So it's very similar. First, what is the HTML tag? Input. Take that. Put it in. And what property should I take? This works. Let's take the same thing. Type equals button. And close square bracket. Hey, it's exactly the same thing. So this should work also, correct? If it works for calculate, should not should it not work for start over? I right click, inspect element, and here is what I found in the property. Attribute and the value. Same thing I took and I put in. So if this works, this should also work. Right? Are we sure about it? Your syntax is correct. You wrote it in the correct format. But you have to experiment and see if it really works or not. Now let's click on define. What should it do to you? It should show me a highlight on start over correct it was actually a question so you can put it in the chat yes or no what should it highlight in the application i've got almost 100 percent correct answers uh one right so i got one at least start over now, if this pointed to calculate, then this also should point to calculate. If it's the same thing, why is this not pointing team? What is wrong in this? When it is saying locator not found whatever, then that means that something is wrong with this. Is it my syntax? Syntax is what? Syntax is basically... Uh, let's say that you'll be learning a new language, a, a speaking, uh, uh, what do you call it, linguistic language, like English or Spanish and so on, okay? If I have to communicate with you in Spanish, I speak the right language. If I speak something else, if I speak incorrect, you may still try and make it out, but I'm not speaking correctly, right? What we wrote is probably not correct. Why is it so? I don't know. They look almost the same. I have two forward slashes. Is the name of the HTML tag correct? Do I have open and closed square brackets? Do I have an at symbol before the attribute name? Do I have the equation? Why am I explaining all this to you team? Because this is the process.
the only reason people do not advance on most of these tools is because they see errors they cannot fix it they say this is not for me because you've not approached it in a proper process or a manner you have to go in a very systematic way the only other thing that i can see is this button button is when i put it into word format and i gave a single quote here this looks like a different character than what i saw here unlike what we saw in main type right probably that is a bug not sure so what can i do delete this and write it out here do they look different for my naked eyes no but if i look closely go closer to the system then yes they in fact look different now if i say fine there we go so this means that my type is not the attribute that can uniquely identify me it's like last name you'll have so many last names in fact even in the participants list today there'll be so many people with a common last name or even probably a first name so this syntax correct but my trial and error has failed me what does it mean it means we have to go back and try and do something else okay you didn't find it on one spot you basically uncovering different bugs but as you get through the experience of repeating this you will master it okay what else can i do how about class start over button right click let's try that if i say here the html tag is the same but the attribute is class start over button 1 and now i say fine hmm this didn't work so that means that i have to try one more thing correct my trial and error failed but what really went wrong in this even before i should try it is did i give everything correctly in there or not input words two forward slashes open square brackets add class start over button 1 good <coughs> but if you go back and look closely to i have in fact deliberately entered two double v's on here why did i do it because it was a manual error we write we type we can go wrong so you have to observe things very very closely okay now click on find again did we go to calculate or did i go to start over hey looks like class seems to be a better attribute all right now if i want to repeat the same thing for calculate how do i do it two forward slashes input see we're getting faster right now just imagine you repeat this a few times how fast you'll get in element identification in two or three classes right so and what do i take type equals single quotes what is the class for this cal button 1 now this should work as well right now i'll say fine element locator not found it is not able to locate it so it worked here it didn't work here you know something is going wrong again i have again deliberately did this the attribute is not type the attribute is class and fine there you go so looks like class is unique to this attribute very good now let's go back to some of these tools how about close travel right click inspect element input okay fair enough so as soon as you get the html tag i put input now if i say add and i say uh, what it says here what did it say uh, type equals text what should this point to team so it should point to uh, type equals text to travel but let's just see clothing inspect element type this is also text that means type is common between these two and could be the same with others as well then what do i do so if i click on find what should i get see these are the questions the reason i am asking you is you have to think in your mind what will i get if i keep this and click on find should it give me a message saying that hey too many elements found with the attribute name type and html tag input with the attribute name type value as text ideally that is what it should do right but when you click on find it will highlight the first element that matches these properties it is highlighting the first element how about the second element we will come to it don't worry on the right away how about the third element with it so basically same properties but first element with that property or second element so very similar to this div blank div here team 
small dip. I'll try and do it too. So where is that? The blank, just this div is saying first row. This div with square bracket three is coming to the thir third row. So we will come to duplicate objects, similar properties. How do we identify them? Okay. So type <coughs> equals text is not good enough. That is why I can look for name equals close. If the name is not there, then it's duplicate. Okay. The reason Selenium identification uses the ID or name out here directly is because most commonly, who is writing this code? Do you know, team? Who, which role in a IT organization is writing this code? Is it auto get getting auto generated by its own? Most times, yes, but there's something very custom to it. Who is doing it? The type equals text. If I say type equals link, sorry to show me a link here. Not sure. I don't think it is do, but basically saying who defines the type, who defines the value out here, who defines the background color, the name, all this thing. The developers are doing it and they are doing it based on certain documentation. Where is the documentation coming from? Requirements documentation. That's where it all starts from. Basically, someone is saying that these students typically who come to browse this need to enter different fields. They initially, when they develop, they started with only these fields. They never had these fields before. The version one. Version two, they said, hey, most students want car payment also there. So they added it. So the requirements document is getting updated every time. The development team is taking that, converting it into something called as a technical design document, and then going ahead and writing the code. Requirements to technical to the design or technical documentation, then code. We will take the requirement and create test cases and test scenarios out of it and then go and test. That is your parallel life cycle of testing. Okay. If what did I want to say? Yeah, so if the users are doing it, typically, typically, most typically, in most cases, they use a name or an ID field to uniquely identify. So Selenium wanted to make it easy for non-development people to be able to test and create automations for uh, different aspects. That's why they created this very, very simple tool to use. Anyone can master, anyone can run it. But they also added the component of creating the same thing into different formats, okay? That is where we will get to. It's not being displayed here just because of the latest version. Um, I'll, I'll tell you about that. There is there's something called as experimental features. That power is what makes this tool special. And that RC, remote control power or server power or that web driver power is what it makes it special because you can do so much more with it. Okay. So they said that instead of all of this, let's just say name equal clothing. Okay. And say fine. There you go. They said if I have a name or a ID with a unique value, we can use it directly. And that's the first thing I mentioned here. Okay, so basically layman term. Someone doing records, these are the two, three ways it will get automatically created. You and I will always create this map. Why? You will control exactly how. It's like teaching a dog uh, new skills. Okay, if you ask it to go and pick up a hat and it goes and picks up a gun, I mean, you're failing at what you're supposed to be doing, right? And it's good to start with that at least the dog is picking up something. But is it even doing close to it? That is the difference between ID and your real coding. All right. So fair enough initially. But as we go advance, the way we have started to write our own XPaths for each element is what is going to help us extremely well. Make sense, team? about at value equals start over great uh, at value equals start over where is value start over I don't know oh, okay probably right click and that's what I want you to experiment with how about this right right click miscellaneous right if I right click and say inspect element what do I see here class equals blue line if I say class equals blue line will it work Is it going to be distance applied? Is this the only one? Oh, okay. I think it's going above that. Uh, inspect element. Class equals. I'm gonna click on it. Find again. Why is it highlighting blue? Uh, different. 
of this, I think, is not highlighting books and supplies, it is highlighting under that. It is basically highlighting the first one item that is matching a class with a blue line. But it, it, again, it can be changing. So you have to create your basic formula of saying it starts where did I what did I want to do? Uh, let's say floating, right click and click the widget. Class TV class is it. So if I say the HTML tag is TV and the attribute name is class and the value of that attribute is blue line and close the square bracket and now say find do I find that element I find not clothing but the first one that is let's see where is it can you see the highlight the first one that matches that that is how it is doing so you have to find different ways of identifying if I right click where is it floating and say inspect element go here and right click here and say copy xpath now it may give you something altogether a different one so if I go here and say this one now it automatically generates the whole path for you only issue is it is limited to how relative it is to the other element okay team any questions before I move forward you can start to put your questions there and I can come back on it okay Let me see the questions very quickly. How do we uh, uh, start over button? Someone asked me that. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sanjay. So, uh, where is this? Right click on this and say inspect element. Now, inspecting this element, class equals start over button. We used, right? What did we want? Value equals start over. See, that seems to be more logical actually. And we're going to come to that. Why? That if, in fact, if you go here and click on start over, do you see this getting highlighted separately in a white box? Now, let's say I change this to my test. Do you see that getting generated also on the code here, on the page? So, as you change the HTML code, this is the other advantage of Firebug. Firebug helps me to look at the HTML code for an element and also be able to change certain information to see how it displays. Does it go and change this in the application at that website? No. Because whenever you browse on the internet, you get a version downloaded onto your local machine into some temporary file folder and then it is uh, showing it from there. So this is now just what is downloaded. It is not doing anything on the original. Okay. So you could change this and see it will automatically represent. See, whatever you saw there was the one that is getting represented. So let me try to uh, undo this. What was it? Start over, right? I have to write that. Start over. Right? This was the one. Now, if you see that it seems to be more logical to use a calculate or a start over um, as an input to identify these. Why? Because I don't have to go and say start over button one or is it cal calculate button one or cal button one. Developer created different classes. When they create classes, basically they're saying, what should be the style of this, what should be the font of this, what should be the size, all that information they provided in the specific class. Okay, so they may name the classes differently, so the naming convention is not used. But sometimes very makes very sense, see, calculate is a good one to identify that. So if I go here and say value, no, sorry, what should I start with team? HTML tag, what is input? Then square bracket and value equals uh, calculate okay and I say find this now do I find it there you go that's found so similarly I can create one more and say value equals start over okay now you're gonna say find do I find it there you go 
So it makes more sense to have something that is you can easily relate it to, relate it to that element even looking at the code here. All right, kids, making sense. Now, uh, what I wanted to show you next is I wanted to show you something else, kids. Basically, we are getting into this command target file. Now, a good exercise, not the best great exercise, but a good exercise, say if there's a data, just let us see a little bit. I haven't e emailed anyone the files. I will start to email them after break, you see. Now, a good exercise is, I want to start with a very, very blank new test case, okay? But before I get into it, I want to create a high level plan. Going back to our drawing board, we want to, all that we want to do, I want to first document it so that it, our approach is very clear. The first step, status is as we go along, we'll start filling in, okay? What I want to do is as we want to prepare a test plan, a test scenario and get some test data. Did I already do that? One second. Uh, team, I haven't probably answered a few more questions. Let me see. Correct. In the start mode, one minute. How do we add more than one attribute in Excel? We'll come to it. Sivin, you can add a lot of them. We will go into it. Okay, I've introduced it. We will get into it. Sure. Uh, is the limitation with the attribute method that I will not pick if the position of the element has moved? Uh, as is, yes. The one that automatically gets generated using that old relative part, yes. So for clothing, if I want to custom write the X part, what do we do? So for clothing, where is clothing? Which one? Oh, this word is it. We will come to it. How do we identify this? There's something that is going to uniquely let us identify it. And we will come to some of those properties as we move forward. Okay. How do we identify the text and so on? Let's see. How do we add more than one attribute? So how can we use multiple properties to identify the object? Yeah. We're going to come to it. But it's very simple. I'll tell you. Let's say that I go to Fusion. Let me identify this is Excel. Okay. I say type equals text. And I want to use one more property. Is only I don't have. Mm, okay, let's say job income, right click and say inspect element. Type equals text. And for this alone, let's change the size to be 12. Okay, I change the size. Do you see the size of this text? Now I can use type and size hopefully to uniquely identify this field through my ID. Is my ID still open? Yes, good. So if I go here, wherever that was, and now how do I identify this? So the first thing is two forward slashes, input, add. What is that first attribute that we want to take? Name of it, type. Equal, single quotes, text. That is done. Okay. And what is next we want to do? Team, one second, please. about that team all right sorry so i'm saying the first attribute name is type and the value is text and now the next attribute name is add the attribute that i want to collect is size and the value itself of this is 12 okay now we close the brackets and now i've put two different attributes and two different values now let's say find what do I see team? You find that combination of the type as text and size is 12. Okay. Those are the two properties that you use to identify it. As we go through the server and as we go through the 
web drivers, you will see that element identification, you get a little more um, functional in terms of more into it, like we'll have descendants, we'll have Ajax, how do we use dynamic takes and all of those things. How do we generate a, ex uh, sometimes what happens is, you'll have text one, two, three as a property. Okay, the next time when you load the page, that'll be text two, three, four. The next time, you know, it'll be text four, five. So what I'm saying is, there are some properties which you know start with text or end with number nine or have a found in between. So how do you take that pattern and identify those elements will be coming in. But if I have more than one property as a combination that I can use to identify. For example, I know your first name, okay? And I will use the last name also because the first name, last name is a unique combination at least in the current audience. Among the current elements, the type being text and the size being 12 is unique to this element only. And say fine, we go to that. All right? When you give space between value and equals, it errors out. Why is this? So I haven't tried, but you know, you should experiment. Why is this? Devaraj, for example, if I call you, uh, you know, by a different name or I misspell your name, you'll still be able to identify it because you're human enough to understand it. You're thinking, you're, you have a thought process, but these tools don't have. They need it in specific syntax, and that is why you need to provide it. All right? So team, five minutes, what is RGB and let's look for it. Again, RGB is basically red, green, blue. This is the color, the background color is decided by a combination of, a, I don't know if you know the fact that red, green and blue can be mixed in different proportions with each other to come up with any other color, okay? Those are the three universal colors that we have. The red has a specific value, green and blue. If I keep changing these values here, the background for that will change, okay? That is just a abbreviation for how we get it. DDF, okay, we haven't covered it. DDF, where is DDF? Okay, DDF done, very good question, thank you. Just uh, DDF is a data driven automation text trace. Okay, this is what we will start with in day three. Okay, in fact, it is a continuation from where we are. We're gonna take all that learning so far and move forward. But how we're gonna approach it actually? We will customize this test plan, test scenario, test data a little bit more further. We have already created significant portion of it. Okay. So I would say about 85% of this activity is done. The second task is all the elements that we require, we will identify these elements. How are we going to identify it? We will actually, instead of doing this, I will say, uh, ident yeah, we'll identify the X path for all elements needed, number one, okay? Second, in fact, I'm going to take this off and write everything fresh here. Select this, delete these steps, and rearrange this. Uh, identify the X path for all elements needed. Okay. Now, in the IDE, okay, create or write the commands, command, target, and value for each needed uh, step. Okay. That's going to be the next one. Third, we will say convert this into a test ng, which is basically a Java code itself, different for a little bit different format into it. Format. That's what we'll do. Okay. Take this code as is into Eclipse platform. Okay. To uh, We'll take this code into Eclipse platform, then customize the code to handle programming in the sense I am talking about how do we, all this is fine, but I want to capture the results. In IDE, I showed that we'll capture the store using store values, get this and put it here. Okay, but when I take it into Java, I will need to use this further in terms that I will also add these numbers and compare it with this. Only then I can say the value is correct or not. Okay, 
so we will have to develop more logic in it around it okay and the programming uh, condition and loops okay implement java methods that's next after this uh, in the project then read the test data using a something called as a an data provider test ng annotate so a lot of things are new team but basically i'm writing steps no i know exactly what i want to do okay then run the test for various test data and get the results of the test this is what we're going to do actually couple of things important things take this code as we will take this back home going to take this back home okay run the test from eclipse using selenium server that's going to be before we go in okay and set up a selenium server very simple few steps on that there's nothing too complicated about it set up selenium server um, for running the tests that's going to be our first data driven framework project okay we will take about four to five sessions to complete this exercise okay we will try and reuse a lot as well next we will come into and create a similar type of framework but this time instead of using data provider using test ng we will use and we will write and use method where we can directly go and read from excel take input from here and get the output from the application and start populating it in the excel directly okay project 3 is going to be developing a keyword driven framework using web driver we are going to do first two projects on data data uh, using the uh, uh, rc the second project third project on keyword driven framework we will use web driver finally a fourth project on hybrid ai okay for each of this we will use different applications so i just wanted to give you a quick high level of uh, what we're going to do going forward and team for all of you who have access to the screencast please start to use your time in watching some of these videos i'm going to quickly list them down i will also have it sent to you over the email we will not have a session tomorrow our day three will be on monday okay monday is going to be 16th okay that's when we got it that's as per the go to training session uh, the the go to training schedule and team do note that sometimes sessions we will miss on some sessions we may not have continuous sessions there are days either i am unavailable due to some reasons or uh, uh, we have few other limitations and we may push that thing okay but we will cover all the 15 if needed couple of more sessions to complete the uh, expected topics so if you go to the selenium recorded folder you it's great to watch this ide over here okay it's great to watch so what i'm giving you is already present in different formats just each time i deliver different lectures sometimes it's, it's changing the application files okay are all out here if you have go in dig deeper into some of these videos take ide one uh, four videos or take this ide two four videos different videos same output but gives you a detailed overview about exactly what we have done in these two lectures okay uh, eclipse rc how do we set up eclipse how do we get into rc and so on and some junit basics you also find the test ng basics down below there you go test ng basics i'll give it to you but i will also want you to watch this video i want you to definitely watch test ng basics but after you watch eclipse rc <coughs> then you have to go to the test ng basics two videos must eclipse rc actually i'm going to write this down uh, 0201 eclipse rc and 11 zero zero test ng basics okay these 
two videos please do watch for sure before monday six that way we can go at a little more faster pace and cover more topics all right team team any other questions please i'm gonna also take that note for myself i will mail it to all the team all the members okay uh, let's see uh, can you please uh, answer i have done that Said, what are these statements case sensitive so here is my thing there are so many programming languages that i typically work with not so many at least three or four and each programming language sometimes are case sensitive some what is case sensitive upper or lower case does it matter some of them matter some of them doesn't matter so it is better to treat everything as case sensitive that way you will fundamentally not make any mistakes okay if i see something is case sensitive i will use it that way can we use rand function to create random numbers every time i execute my test case Baishali, I'm not sure from an IDE perspective if you can do that, okay? Because I'm not an expert on IDE. But when we get to Java, there is a lot you can do. RAND is one of those. Selenium ID, not sure. Probably, if you go into commands and type RAND, I don't see that one. Okay, numbers, I don't think. Uh, but what you can do is if you can do it in JavaScript, okay, you should be able to do the same thing out here is what I'm saying. But why do you need it? We will anyway move to programming platform. So these are the step, steps for data-driven framework. Data-driven framework project number one. Each data-driven framework project is different to each other. For example, if you go here, there is the DDF1, DDF2, and so on. Uh, 04, see, 04 series is first DDF project. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth uh, series is second data-driven framework project. There are typically some differences in how I've shown it. <coughs> Sorry, because there are different flavors to the implementation of these things. All right. Is TestNG the same as JUnit? No, not necessarily. Basically, the JUnit and TestNG are all Java family. Okay, they've derived out of Java. Every coding aspect is Java. They have certain pre-built functionalities that can be used effectively for testing but we will go beyond their bridge because there's a lot you can do directly at the Java level. Once we go advanced, you will know that it is more effective to work with Java coding rather than be it independent with TestNG or Java or JUnit. But you have both. You have JUnit at length, you have TestNG at length out here. Uh, same for all the frameworks. Framework steps keep varying. You will see a lot of them uh, in as we keep opening each video. You'll see the framework steps keep varying. So, team, any other final questions, please? How to write test plan, test case? So, again, uh, uh, Karnika, it varies. There's different flavors to it. You can put it into the Google group. Someone will probably send you the sample one. Read and write from Excel, save for test ng and j. Again, it's the same. Because you will, you can use the same concepts in everything. Uh, I actually want you to also watch these three videos. How do you read from Excel using Apache POI? Uh, three videos uh, on reading and writing with Excel. Very explained in detail uh, so that we can take that and do it. But you can watch this next week. You don't have to watch it right now. Uh, how do we access screencast? So every subscriber has access to these videos out here. It is based on your programming skills. Everything is based on our programming skills. We will develop it. Don't worry. Whatever level we need to learn, test ng or JUnit in Java, we will do it as part of it. A, don't see 95% of my participants team has very, very minimal or absolute no coding experience. That's the audience. And hence, my presentations are going to go keeping that in mind. My three steps of frameworks keep varying depending on how we implement them. Okay, there are different flavors. Data driven, there can be a dozen different flavors, but it is a generic, good, correct approach. Same thing when we do it in a project level, we will customize it a little different. I'll keep coming back to this. All right, team, thank you so much for now. Uh, thank you for attending day two. Uh, we'll see you back in day three on Monday. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.